Jennifer, thank you so much for joining me here on the Homeschool Sanity Show. I have been very excited about this interview and talking with you about how we can help our daughters develop confidence in their personal style. But before we jump into that topic, I would love to have you tell us a little bit more about you and your family. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I think this is such an important topic for for all women, but especially moms of daughters. Uh, and anytime I get to talk to women about how we can help our daughters have more confidence and feel better about themselves, it's a very good day for me. So thank you. Um, a little about me. So I am a wife of 19 years and a mom of two daughters. My oldest is 15 and my youngest is almost 12. So I am out of the little kid years and enjoying the teenage years so much. Uh, there's this myth that having teenage girls is just hard and awful and you know you should just dread it but i'm having the time of my life i absolutely absolutely love it and in in addition to my two girls we have two little rescue dogs and we live outside of the twin cities in minnesota and uh that's that's pretty much our family oh that is great well i could not agree with you more about uh teens in general yes. i have had a blast with my teens i still have Two. I still have two who are in their teens, and I'm still loving it. So I am happy to hear that you do too. Love it. Okay, so I am interested in your journey into style. How did you get involved in it? Because I feel like your background is not like a lot of people who put style uh, yes. products out into the world. Yes. You actually have quite a bit of experience in the field. So would you tell us <laughs> yes. about that? Yeah, it, and honestly, no shade to cute moms who have figured it out, right? Like I, <laughs> fantastic, that is wonderful. Um, this was never meant to be my career path. As a matter of fact, I wanted to be a high school English teacher. I love teenagers, I've always loved teenagers, even before I was a teenager, I wanted to be a high school English teacher. My career didn't quite work out that way. I spent the early part of my career in the restaurant industry as a trainer. So that teaching element has always been there for me. And then in 99, I traded food for fashion when I went to work for Chico's and I started opening new stores for them, training staff, um, working in stores when there were no new openings going on. And that is really where like my love of style took off. Growing up, I had a very, very, very difficult body to dress. And I never understood why clothes didn't work for me the same way they worked for a lot of my friends. And I thought if I just lose weight, if I worked out more, if I did this, if I did that, it, but nothing worked, nothing worked. And on the first day of work at Chico's, my life was absolutely changed. And I I have them to thank for the, for the business I have today because on the first day of work, they taught me how to dress the four body shapes. And I was like, oh, I'm just an apple. There's a word for this. There is a word for why my pants never fit. There's a word for why my, my the waist is always tight, the butt is always, and legs are always too big. Like there's a word for this. And I wasn't weird and I wasn't malformed and I didn't need to lose an ounce of weight because the truth is, no matter how much weight I lost, sure, I'd go down in sizes, but pants still fit the same. Whether they were a four or a six or a 14 or a 16, they never fit. Mm -hmm. So I was just hooked. And, you know, I think another thing that sets me apart from a lot of wardrobe people out there is that I don't love clothes. And I know that's mm -hmm. weird, but I love what clothes do for women. I happen to be good at them, right? And it's something I like. Obviously, I, I enjoy style, but I don't have a closet full of designer labels and I'm not like, oh, what are the latest trends? I have to have all the run. That's not it mm -hmm. at all. What I love is what clothes can do for women. You can dress yourself into a better day. You can dress yourself into a promotion. You can dress yourself into, you know, getting out of a, a rut in your marriage. Clothes can do all of those things. And that's what I love. And there's a quote by Vogue editor, former Vogue editor, Diana Vreeland, which is kind of the North Star for my business. And it it says, it's not the dress, but the life you live in the dress that matters. Mm. Mm. Oh my goodness, yes. But what I have found in my 20 some years of doing this is that women don't have the right dress or the right pants or the right shoes to live the, way, the life they wanna live. And so mm. what happens is we pull back from life. We go, no, I don't wanna go on that girl's weekend. No, I don't wanna, you know, there's always like that cute intimidating mom at the park. You don't wanna go talk to that woman. 
even though she's probably a really nice person. You guys probably hit it off and can go have coffee or wine or whatever. You know, it's clothes. If clothes are a barrier, like let's fix them. They're mm -hmm. extremely fixable in all the things that are going on in the world and all the things that we have to worry about. Fixing pants is one of the easier things. And it's just amazing to me how it can unlock so much for women. Mm. Wow. I, I feel like we could kind of end the interview now. <laughs> and I mean, that's that all. Was... Thank you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, that that is why I love fashion. I mean, as a psychologist, I recognize how powerful it can be mm -hmm. to shape our attitude, our confidence, our emotions, even. We can just have more energy mm -hmm. when we feel like we look good with the body that God yeah. has given us. So I'm hoping that you can expand on what you started talking about already, which is how can we have style confidence? Not even just our daughters, but us as moms. What are some of the basic principles that you teach women to begin to develop that confidence? I think first and foremost, you have to give yourself permission to like what you like. Stop shooting all over yourself, right? I should be more dressed up. I should wear this. I should wear heels. I should wear this. I should have that. No, you shouldn't. Give yourself permission to just like what you like. I was talking to a client yesterday and it's, it was our second time meeting together. And she said, last time we talked, you just gave me permission to like what I liked. And she said it changed her total outlook on style mm. because she wasn't shopping from this like, well, I'm a pair, so I should wear this or I should wear that or I shouldn't wear that. She just liked what she liked. So I think that that is just, if you're not going to do that, just skip everything else. Just, just skip everything else. But after that, make peace with who you are, where you are, in the body you are in right now. Just right now. We have this idea that if we buy a pair of jeans that is bigger than the size we would like to be or that we are currently wearing, that that is the last pair of jeans we will ever buy. And somehow that number will be branded on us and we will never get over the shame of being a 12 when you used to be a 10 or a or an 18 when you used to be an 8. Like, it's not the last pair of jeans you will ever buy. It is just getting you through your life, whatever phase you are in right now. And, you know, I think I need to temper the idea that clothes make everything better because they don't, they don't. <laughs> but here's what I do know. Feeling bad about yourself also doesn't make anything better. Mm. Right. So I don't think if you are going through like a, you know, a, de a depression or you are having some really serious stuff going on, I don't think that putting on a better outfit is going to take it all away. It, it doesn't. Mm. Mm -hmm. But it does make it easier to face it. It does make it easier to kind of hold that space for yourself and say, I'm still able to care about myself and for myself during these difficult times. And so often I think that we as women, we just keep waiting until, until I have a better body, until I have more money, until I go back to work, until the kids are older, until, until, until. But the problem is, this is life. Like right now, this is it. This is it. And I had a client who... She said that she would um, buy new clothes when she lost the baby weight, when she lost the baby weight. And she called me because she was going back to work and she hadn't lost the baby weight. And all of a sudden she needed new clothes. Her baby was 16. And it's funny, but it's also not because those are 16 mm -hmm. years of birthdays where she felt bad about what she was wearing. It was 16 years of family vacations where she didn't want to get in the pictures. 16 years of feeling frumpy on every date night. Why? Why? Mm buy the clothes for where you are right now and then buy new ones when when it changes and and if you're feeling like oh my gosh that's so wasteful you don't have to buy a lot you have to buy the right things you have to have enough to get you through and to honor the way you really live if you are living an extremely casual life quit aspirational shopping right like <laughs> Mm -hmm. In my little kid years, I was always like, oh, I could wear that to brunch. Okay, but I hadn't been to brunch in five years. So <laughs> where right. am I going in that, right? And instead, I started investing in really cute athleisure things. And, you know, I have a fantastic sneaker collection, things for the way that I live right now. You know, we kind of think, think of style as this thing that happens. 
when all conditions are right, when we have the right mm -hmm. place to go, when the weather is right, when this is right, when that's right, when I don't have to stand very long because I want to wear those uncomfortable heels. Style is just how you show up for all of it. And you can have good style at the park, the pumpkin patch, the, you know, a, a nice dinner. You can have style anywhere you go. It's just a different way of thinking about it. We don't have to live the majority of our lives in just this like bottom of the barrel getting by. Because if you're going to buy yoga pants and wear yoga pants, cool, just buy nice, cute ones. That's an option. We can do that. Right. So I think those are really, those are the, the two big things. Like what you like and dress for where you're at right now. Wow. So fantastic. So fantastic. So um, I know my listeners right now are just super inspired. So now I have to bring it back to helping our daughters have mm. style confidence. So having a 15 year old, and I think you said an almost 12 year old, almost 12. what have you done to help your daughters have that style confidence? Not necessarily great style in your opinion, but that confidence. Um, nothing. I do nothing. <laughs> And sometimes doing nothing is the hardest thing in the entire world. And I'll share a story that I love. And I'm so grateful for, to my little one for giving it to me. She was five years old and I'm getting ready in my bathroom and I can see her walking into my bathroom behind me in the mirror. And all I could say was, wow, that's an outfit. Wow. And she said, I know. Sometimes I put things together that people don't think would look to good together, but I think I look fantastic. <gasps> oh, <laughs> who are we as people to take that away from them? I actually still get teary thinking about that. And I was sharing that story. I was actually sharing the story one morning. I was speaking to a mom's group and I was hanging out at the tables before I went on stage. And we were talking and I was sharing the story of how my little one looked absolutely nuts. Uh, and there's no other word for it. When she went off to preschool that day and no other word. It was, it was, Wow. But that's what she picked, so that's what she wore, right? And I was kind of joking about it. And one of the women at the table says, oh, no, 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 not me. If my daughter comes down in something I don't like, I tell her to turn right around and go change. Mm -hmm. And I thought, so that's the first message, really. Like, that's how your daughter is starting her day, is you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. This isn't right. You don't look right. The world can eat my kids, right? They, the world will eat my kids. They, it tries on a daily basis. I'm not going to. Mm. And as moms, we have to get away from this idea that what our daughters wear is really a reflection of us. I really don't think that when my girls went to preschool or kindergarten looking a little bit nuts, that their teachers were like, oh, my gosh, and her mom's a wardrobe stylist. Can you believe she put her in that? Mm. No, everyone mm -hmm. knows mm -hmm. that when they see children dressed a little <laughs> out there, that that's just the kid expressing themselves. So. I don't do anything really, especially when they were little. I just did not intervene. Now I did set ground rules early and I think it's very important to have consistent ground rules so mm -hmm. that there isn't any uh, question in the moment. So my rule was no three B's, no bellies, butts or boobies. I didn't want to see them. Now crop <laughs> tops are a thing and I've had to give into that a little bit, but they're also a little bit older. So it's, you know, I, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. fine. You can show a sliver of skin, but they're not wearing mm -hmm. like real crop tops to school. Absolutely not. But it was mm -hmm. no bellies, butts or boobs. I don't want to see my girls with their butt cheeks hanging out of their denim shorts. So they mm -hmm. always knew they knew where the lines were, but beyond that, have at it, have mm -hmm. at it. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I think I do now as they've gotten older, and I'm sure that this will be very controversial. I give in, I give in to the trends, I give in to what they want because I understand the phase of life they're in, how much it matters. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I do. we can afford to do it. And I, my, my girls are not walking around full time in Lululemon, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think we're buying Amazon leggings. I, I like the ones from Sam's club, you know, I, so we don't do, do it for everything, but I remember being a kid and like the guest jeans, if you had the guest jeans, you felt like you were a part of the crowd. And I, I really do believe mm -hmm. in these, in these middle school and high school years where feeling really other is really difficult. Fine. You can have the you know, you can have the shoe that you can have the, the Crocs that everybody's wearing. You can have this, you can have that. I don't, I, I give into it. I, and, and 
I'm happy to be counterculture in a whole lot of ways. Not that one. Mm -hmm. And I would have to agree with you, even though my audience is homeschooling, so Mm -hmm. their kids are not going to school, they still do participate in church activities and homeschool group activities Mm -hmm. and, and some sports that are outside of their circle and that kind of thing. And so I do still think it is an issue that our daughters are going to want to not look too different unless it's like yeah. your daughter <laughs> wanting to stand out, you know, for her own style. <laughs> and my my personal experience as a child was that my mother sewed the majority of my clothing. And then once I reached sixth grade, I was not homeschooled. I was just teased mercilessly about my clothes. And mm-hmm. I never wanted my daughter to have to experience that. You know, it's yep. it's not a big yep. deal to allow your daughter to feel like she fits in while yep. still standing by the ground rules uh, that you have as a family for right. clothing right. choices. So I completely agree. And I, you know, I've always looked at... Ooh. So sorry, my earpiece just came out. I've always looked at clothing like a little bit of armor, right? When you're going into Mm. a difficult situation, I think you can dress in a way that makes you feel powerful and confident. And I look at middle school, I did not have a great middle school experience. So I look at middle school as a battlefield every single day. And (laughs) I do, I do. And if my daughter wants, you know, a North Face sweatshirt as her armor, I'm going to buy you that North Face sweatshirt because I can, because it matters. Both of my girls aren't huge clothes people. They don't ask for a ton of stuff. So I don't feel like it's out of control. I think we have a good Mm -hmm. balance, but I want that for them. I really, really Mm -hmm. want that for them. And, you know, what I will say about not saying anything as they were little, they have both figured it out. And I think that there is, there's such (laughs) a fine line between like genius and crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And part of it is just figuring it out. And I remember my older daughter, she had this outfit on and she's like, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. And then she said, I think it needs shorter shorts. And she was wearing like Bermudas and she Mm -hmm. put on like regular length shorts and it was right. Mm -hmm. What was wrong with the outfit was the proportion. Mm -hmm. And she didn't have a word for proportion. She was actually about 10 when she figured that out. But Mm. she figured it out. She now understands outfit proportion just naturally from being able to just experiment and play. And that's a wonderful thing. Proportion will serve you really well anywhere you go in, you know, in in getting dressed. So I think that just allowing kids to figure it out on their own and just shutting up and not giving the answer, not giving the answer, you know, and that is the hardest part. But I have had... Over the summer, my daughter needed a more modest swimsuit. She was a, a, a camp counselor, and so she needed a, a very modest swimsuit. And she had no time to shop for it. And I said, can I do it? And she's like, you can't pick a swimsuit. I'm like, I bet I can. And I was able to buy my teenage daughter a swimsuit online, sight unseen, and she loved it. And I was like, who's glad their mom's a wardrobe stylist now, huh? And <laughs> My little one's going to a concert next Friday. And I was like, what are you going to wear? What are you going to wear? And she's like, I don't know. And I said, let me just pull some stuff for you. And I ordered a whole bunch of stuff. And she's like, it's perfect. So we're kind of like, they didn't want my advice for a very long time. And there are a lot of times now they don't want my advice, Mm -hmm. you know, but we're getting to the point where I can appreciate their style and they can appreciate that I kind of do know what I'm doing, even though I'm a mom, you know, (laughs) it's, (laughs) I kind of do. And I think they, maybe the last thing I want to add here is that I, I don't criticize trends. Mm. And I think that this is really difficult for a lot of moms, especially now as we're reliving a lot of stuff that mom, we wore before, right? Like, oh, I had that skirt. Oh, that's terrible. Blah, 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 blah. That's awful. I don't criticize trends. Mm-hmm. They love it. You know who probably criticized the trends we were wearing? Our mothers, <laughs> right? And did it feel good? <laughs> no. So when we're in a store and one of my girls say, I love this. And I would say, oh, that's super cute for you. It's not for me. Nobody Mm. thinks I should be wearing a, you know, 
crop top. That's not going to happen. <laughs> but for them, maybe that is cute. And mm -hmm. I, I think that that is a way, first of all, to keep ourselves from aging into in, invisibility uh, and also to stay connected with our daughters. Because the more we tell them we hate what they think and do and like, mm -hmm. the less mm -hmm. they're going to share it with us. And so every time we get in the car, I tell my girls, play whatever you want. And I'm listening to their music. Mm -hmm. And it helps just to keep open communication and it's keeping me from becoming, you know, an old fuddy duddy, which is very, you know, nice, very good. nice side effect. Right. I mean, just fantastic advice. I think, um, I think we always want to prioritize the relationship. I mean, what good would it do to have a daughter who dressed at the height of fashion who didn't even want to have a conversation with you? <laughs> you right. Know? Right. We, we want to be close. Um, and I thought you might be interested in this. I, in advance of this interview, my, my daughter is a sophomore in college and I asked her about style. I actually showed her, um, the outfits in your fall wardrobe <laughs> capsule. And I said, do you think that people your age could modify these outfits to make them look stylish? And the first thing she said was, Absolutely. She said, what I have seen is that girls my age, they can make anything look stylish if they wear it with confidence. Like it's intentional. I'm wearing this intentionally, just like your daughter was doing, and they own it. She said, they make it look cool. And at the same time that she said that, she said that they're is a sizable group of girls who literally wear a uniform and it's Lululemon. Yep. <laughs> it's oh, Lululemon. yeah. Lululemon. Oh, Lulu. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that was so interesting. And I think it will be interesting for the moms who are listening to see their young adult daughters kind of choose a path. Are mm -hmm. they going to go the I'm my own? you know, mm -hmm. style, or are they going to go with a Lululemon, <laughs> you know, uniform <laughs> route? Yeah, there are a lot of paths to pick, right? And right. my older one does not, she's actually very athletic. Mm. She doesn't wear athleisure clothes or athletic clothes to school. Like she she wears jeans, she wears like, she, she just likes to be a little more put together. She would never leave the house in actual sweatpants, ever, ever. <sighs> Yeah. My little so one, comfort is king. Comfort is king. Okay. And you know what? I have yeah. days where I'm one way and I have days where I'm the other. Uh, I, I think it's fun to watch young women, teenagers, young women experiment with style because it is such a fun time of life. And I know that we all look back and go, oh my gosh, I was so cute then. Why didn't I appreciate how cute I was then? <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? And yeah. I, I hope yes. that they, I hope that maybe they're starting to catch on like, Girls know these are, these are your cute years. You just just lean into them. Well, oh, I don't know if you've ever heard um, Leanne Morgan's comedy, but she does a whole bit. Oh on my that. gosh, it's just genius! It's just genius. Yeah. And yes, yeah, yeah. uh huh, <laughs> mm -hmm. very okay, relatable. So, um, what makes homeschool girls a little bit different than girls who are in traditional school settings? I think is that. They have the opportunity to do classes and study topics that they're interested in, and they're more willing to do that with their moms than they might be otherwise. For mm -hmm. example, I have a good friend whose teen daughters are very interested in style, and they have been learning about style with their mother and, you know, just trying to decide, like, what kind of clothes would they like in their own wardrobe to... Um, just kind of share who they are, what their style is, um, and put that out there in the world. And as my friend was telling me about this, I thought about the resources that you have, and they would be perfect for a mother and daughter or daughters to go through together. So can you tell us about the resources that you make available? Absolutely. But first, I have to really caution moms about teaching daughters who don't want to be taught about their body type about their body type. Right. 
uh, growing up, I, my mother was wonderful. She was a, a saintly woman. But it, when I was like eight years old, she was saying, oh, you look best in raglan sleeves. Those broad shoulders look best in raglan sleeves. She was right. When I find a raglan sleeve top, I'm like, oh, that's going to look good, right? Like she was not wrong, <laughs> but it didn't make me feel good. It didn't make me feel mm. empowered. It made me feel like there was something wrong with me. And I get moms all the time asking me all the time, like, how do I talk to my daughter about her body shape? Don't don't just zip it zip it there is a time where your daughter will be like ah these shoulders mm, not not loving this what do i do and that's when the conversation happens but let's not put ideas into their heads right so mm -hmm. what i think is useful is for moms to know the information and be able to kind of guide right like so mm -hmm. when i was shopping for the swimsuit or when i was shopping for the concert outfit I know what to pull. I know what, but I don't say I'm choosing this because of this. I just do it. Mm. So I think having that knowledge mm. to be able to just kind of, you know, share behind the scenes, so to speak, not verbally, just, Hey, try this on might work for you is really good. But so what do I, how do I help people? So we now sell a membership. We have a quarterly membership and it gives you access to everything we have. And it's called the style circle because I think we have to look holistically about style. I think when we sort of choose like one thing to focus on body shape. So we have a course on dressing your body shape. Well, that's great, but then you don't know what to put in your closet. Mm -hmm. So we offer, you know, our seasonal capsule wardrobe guides. But if you just do a capsule wardrobe guide, you go, but I don't know how to make it work for my style. So we have a class on signature style. So we kind of take style from a whole perspective of, what are you putting in your closet? What are you putting on your body? What are you getting out of your closet? Because that's a really important thing as well. And, mm -hmm. and how do you make it all work together to end up with a wardrobe that feels personal and flattering, whatever that word means to you, that lights you up, that saves you time and money. I think we spend a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money procuring clothes we just don't wear. Mm -hmm. And we got to stop that. We got to stop that. There are better places to put your money, right? And I do believe, I do believe that investing in clothes is a good thing. I do because you have to get dressed and they can make you feel any way you want to feel. So I don't think it's a terrible thing to spend money on, but I don't believe in spending stupid money on anything. So I really want to teach women how to use their resources of time money and closet space well and end up with a wardrobe they actually like and are excited about and make it easy to get dressed in the morning. Right. Well, I can definitely testify to the fact that it does make life easier. I have been able to take your capsule wardrobes and upgrade my athleisure style, which I pretty much just had black yoga pants and black tops. <laughs> for years and years and years. And then I thought, you know, I love color. Why don't mm. I have really cute, colorful athleisure wear? And, Why not? And I don't, you know, I'm, I spend a lot of time at the gym, but I don't look cute there. Mm. <laughs> so, mm. um, so that was really a revelation for me. Um, and it, it, it is just, it's so much fun. Your wardrobe capsules, I feel like they're not um, they're not just generic. It's not just like olive and gray, you know, because <laughs> no. oh, that goes together. You know what I mean? No, I, no, we do I, things a little differently. <laughs> right. You know, a, a can we get over this? Like that. Can we get over it? This idea that in order to be stylish, we all have to look like French women. Nothing against French women, but like. <laughs> Why is that the only definition of style? I mean, we play with color and pattern and different silhouette and what's really fun for us. We are very committed to reusing pieces year after year after year and season after season. The first thing we do when after we pick a, a color palette for the season is we say, okay, what can we reuse from past capsules? What can mm -hmm. we put in there so women don't have to buy? And this last one, I was just shocked. So many women were like, I didn't have to buy anything. I didn't, I already, mm. you know, and I mm -hmm. love that. I love that. But this idea that capsules have to be boring or neutral or minimal. No, we don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. We have fun with clothes. We have fun with it. Right. And I so appreciate that. Okay. So Jennifer, where can people find out more about the style circle and also tell us about your podcast? 
Yeah. So first of all, if you go to my website, youreverydaystyle.com, you can find everything there. And we do have a free mini capsule wardrobe guide. So it's 10 pieces that combine to make over 30 outfits. I can actually fit them in a in a plain carry-on, not like the checked, you know, the like the one that goes under the seat. You can put a month of clothes in a bag that goes under the seat. So you can grab that there. You can also find our podcast. Our podcast is called The Everyday Style School, and it's everything your mom never told you about getting dressed. From <laughs> how to dress your body shape to why your clothes are fitting you funky and, you know, some mindset stuff. We talk about it. We talk about it all because there is this idea that women are just born with a style gene. And if you don't have it, that you're somehow weird and you're the only one, there is no style gene. Some people have kind of a natural aptitude, but it is then well honed through practice over decades, right? But if you're like, I don't know how to match pants and shirts, you're not weird. You're not weird. That is the majority of women. If you hate shopping, you're not weird. Just because the movies tell you you love shopping doesn't mean you actually love shopping. You know, the movies get that very, very wrong. And nobody's shopping in heels with lots of carrier bags, right? Like those are uncomfortable and we're miserable. It's just not how it works. So that's what we seek to do on the podcast is we really, we're on a mission to inspire women to love the way they look and to give them the tools to make getting dressed easy. Well, and you fulfill that mission. So oh, thank you. Um, I, I love everything that you're doing. And I am very hopeful that our listeners are going to check it out. At least download the free mini capsule yes. guide. It's fabulous and give Jennifer's podcast a listen. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy life to talk with us today. Thank you so much for having me. This was just wonderful.